Tonight on Border Security International. Look that way. Good fine. Now the keys. You don't have any explanation for that. I don't. Placing under arrest. You understand that? Three out of five US-bound Canadians return home the same day. How long were you each down in the United States? A short trip south can indicate that travelers are attempting to import undeclared US purchases. Any alcohol or tobacco? At the Douglas Land Crossing, south of Vancouver. How often do you go down to the States for groceries? About every six weeks or so. A Canadian is in secondary after a six-hour stateside shopping trip. Where's the first place you went after crossing the border? Bellingham. Okay. Did you make any detours, no. any other trips, just directly from store to store to store? And you're not working today on a Tuesday at 2 o'clock? Actually, it's because I can choose my own hours. I work for myself. I have an office in my home. Is there anything which isn't included in these receipts right here? Okay. Just wait there at the counter. Sure. So before I take a look inside your vehicle, I'm just going to see what you have on your person. So can you empty everything on your pockets onto the counter? Do you have anything at all? I'm just going to see your purse here. Thank you. And when people go down to the US, we give them a chance to declare outside what they picked up, because not everyone's honest with us. So if we don't find anything, you'll be on your way. Oh, yeah. Was this today as well? Yeah, that's right. Good, fine. I'm sorry, that I had to go in and um, get a replacement phone today. Do you have a US phone? I do have a US phone for the times that I go down and shop because I have my own business. I want to be able to be reached if necessary. No. And what's the other phone you have here? You have two. One Canadian phone. Oh, no. I have my Canadian phone at home. Two US phones and the lack of a Canadian cell phone. Obviously, my suspicion is raised. So you, you went down to buy a replacement US phone. I actually went to buy minutes for the phone I already had and ended up having to buy a replacement phone last minute. So you might just leaning off the counter. Oh, sure. So you said the reason why you have two phones is because you never want to be out of contact for your business, right? Yes. But you didn't bring your Canadian phone with you, so on your drive down, you didn't have any phone at all? Right. Have you had any problems at the border in your past? Seven ground trip. Another frantic travel day at Toronto's Pearson International Airport. Where are you coming from today? How many bags do you have with you today, sir? In Terminal 1, a canine find lands a Canadian resident in secondary. The dog handler indicated there was agricultural products in the bag. There's no indication of any food or plant products uh, declared on his cart. Qui a fait la valise? Ma mère. Votre mère. Okay. Ma mère. The gentleman was coming from Belarus. He spoke very little English, but sufficient French. Excuse-moi, okay. pas regarder ici. OK. Excuse-moi. Ça la viande, eh? Oui. Right. So the first thing that he had in his bag is uh, salami uh, sausage of some sort. You see, la viande, vous avez dit non. Excuse-moi. Mais monsieur, c'est une question très, très grave. C'est sérieux. Vous savez que c'était là. Mais quand même, vous avez dit non. C'était pour le cacher? Oui. Monsieur. The next thing I see poking out amongst his clothes is a leaf. Un plant, monsieur. C'est raison. Ça est même plus grave que la viande. Securing the border at Canada's largest port is no small task. More than 3,000 ships arrive here every year. You guys ready? Sounds good. We're about to board a vessel that's of interest to us. Did you guys see it on the way by? It's visited several high-risk ports, Panama and Brazil specifically, which are source and transit areas for drugs. We came on board with a game plan to uh, do a risk assessment search to see if there's any indicators that that type of commodity might be on board. The crew had extensive shore leave in Panama. Three men did go ashore. No crew changes and no weapons declared on board. Any questions? OK, let's go. Any chance to take a look, Captain? Thank you very much, Captain. It's 
Clear. Clear. While we were searching, we came across a switchblade. Unfortunately, these are prohibited weapons in Canada. Is this your locker? Yes, sir. When these ships are in Canadian waters, the crew do go ashore, so there is that potential for these prohibited weapons to end up inside of Canada. It's not like you've done anything wrong, right? It's just that you're not allowed to have it. So we're going to seize it, but there's no penalty, there's no fine, okay? You're just gonna take it away from you again, okay? On the lower deck, the search continues. Um, I need help. So we were looking in the duct space behind the toilet panels, and I found an area of concern. You might be tall enough just to reach up and see. Is it this way or that way? Look that way. Good find. at the Coots Land Crossing in Alberta. I'm from Oklahoma. I'm going to Alaska. And I love children. And my name is Miss Busybody. <laughs> a retired preacher and his wife are driving their camper to Alaska, where they plan to spread the gospel with music and puppets. Do you guys own firearms? I do have. They were marked for a gun exam. Brought them up to the bay for the secondary examination. You don't own any handguns? No. Just rifles, long sure. guns? I have a 22 and a shotgun just for snakes, skunks, uh, coyotes, varmints. Where do you normally travel with the firearms in the vehicle when you are in the US? We don't. You don't. never put them in yeah. the truck? No. Okay. no. So there shouldn't be any ammunition, holsters, no. nothing of that no. sort in there? No. no. How much cash are you traveling with today? I think I have $2,400. In your wallet or all together? Right here. How much do you have in the camper? I think it's 9000 OK. They admitted to having over $10,000. And at that point, we were suspicious because it wasn't initially declared. Under the Proceeds of Crime Money Laundering Act, you're required to report anything over $10,000 when crossing the border. We ain't got over so, 10000 do we? Well, 9 plus 24, that's US. So I want to actually count the cash. We don't care. Go ahead. We came to Alaska last year. Mm -hmm. And we loved it. And my credit card yeah, got probably. messed up. Yep. And so we, I brought enough money to get home on. It all came to total just over 11000 Are we going to find anything other than that? In Toronto. Plante, monsieur. C'est raisin. Ça est même plus grave que la viande. A Canadian resident returns from Belarus with undeclared meat and a live plant. It's wrapped up in wet cloth. It's quite clear that he intends to keep this alive and to, to replant it. Et vous allez le pousser en Canada? À côté, à la maison. We have no idea what contamination could be in the soil that could uh, bring something into Canada and spread like wildfire. Vous savez, ce n'est pas permis, oui? Oui. He was fully intending for us not to know that he had them, so there's intent here, and there's very real danger. Il y a une amende pour la viande, 800 dollars. Il y a une autre amende pour la plante, un autre 800 dollars. Mais je vais vous charger seulement sur l'un, pas sur les deux. The meat, I just give him a warning, but the plants are more serious. We want to stop that kind of thing from happening. On veut que ce soit la dernière fois, OK? okay. Oui. The meat and the plants will be kept in international waste and destroyed so that it doesn't in any way get into the Canadian environment. He paid his fine, and he said, never again.
At BC's Douglas Land Crossing, a Canadian is sending mixed messages about her two American cell phones. So you said the reason why you have two phones is because you never want to be out of contact with your business, right? Yeah. But you didn't bring your Canadian phone with you, so on your drive down, you didn't have any phone at all? Right. Have you had any problems at the border in your past? Oh, no. Do you have any spare SIM cards anywhere in your vehicle or in your luggage here? No, I don't. Okay, perfect. You can just take a seat. So I'm going to be searching the numbers in her phone on Google and seeing what pops up. There was no recent calls to any American numbers. The phone search is inconclusive. The officer swabs the traveler's personal items for signs of narcotics. So it's clean. So that was her BC services card, and that was a positive result for cocaine residue. Somehow this card has been in contact with cocaine. Now the keys. On the west coast. Look that way. Good find. Officers find something stashed in the ceiling of a foreign cargo ship. We were looking in the duct space behind the toilet panels. I found uh, alcohol hidden inside a cardboard structure and a stack of DVDs. That's yours? Just the alcohol? How about the DVDs? Yes or no, is it yours? Yes, ma'am. It is? Yes, ma'am. We're looking for any sort of sex videos involving children or animals, and that was my primary concern. Why did you hide it? Uh, I'm afraid, ma'am. Afraid of what? Is there any child pornography in any of the DVDs? Decoration. Sex videos involving children? I don't know. This is not pornography. Yes, ma'am. This is just a movie, right? Yes. So why did you choose to hide it? Does the captain know that you have that? Is that why you did it? You hid it from the captain, or did you hide it from us? From the captain, OK. That makes sense, then. The traveler may be in violation of his captain's code, but he hasn't broken any Canadian laws. Next time, don't do not do it, OK? Sorry, OK, sir. that's all right, sir. But just keep it in your cabin, OK? Uh, We've done a complete search, and it's been very clean ship, very low indicators for any kind of contraband, and we're good to go now. Back on land. Now the keys. The personal belongings of a Canadian cross-border shopper are sounding alarms. On the keys and on her services card, those are both resultant for cocaine residue. So now I'm going to see if she has any kind of reasonable explanation. So one of the ways that we you know, go with our examination is that we take swabs of the personal belongings of people who are crossing the border. Now, when I swabbed your personal belongings, I got a couple readings for cocaine. Now, it did. Now, is there any reason why you've been in recent contact with the cocaine or anything that you can use to uh, explain that? I cannot explain that. I don't use it, never have. Are you around people who do cocaine? Not that I'm aware of, but you know, right? Both your keys and your services card, both those hit for cocaine. Wow. So you don't have any explanation for that? I don't. So when I get a reading for cocaine and the person has no explanation whatsoever, that raises my suspicion. So when's the last time you were around cocaine? Um, I'm sure that some of the people I hang around with are probably, um, probably weekly. Yeah, like they might use it once a week or something like that. They're using your cards to... Well, not that I knew of. You know, I'm around, I'm at places, I'm at parties, but myself, no. How about inside the car? Well, I mean, there shouldn't be. I mean, I'm not a user. I am not a transporter, not anything. Have you ever had any problems with the police in your past? No. Not at all? No problems with drugs at all? No. OK. The officer turns his attention to the traveler's car. I'm going to do a couple swabs of the vehicle. Where's home? In southern Ontario, an American arrives at the Peace Bridge crossing. This traveler was coming from the United States today to uh, enter Canada to visit his lawyer in Fort Erie. He 
was referred into secondary as a mandatory referral. He's a person of interest to us. Turns out this visitor may need more legal advice than he realizes. You are criminally in, uh, prohibited from driving in Canada. Oh, shit. Traveler has a criminal history, which has led to him being prohibited from driving in Canada for life. You can contact your local attorney here, but at this time, they're going to place you under arrest. He was witnessed by myself and other officers driving a vehicle in Canada, so he has committed an offense. Placing under arrest for driving while disqualified, OK? Yes. Um, you understand that? Yes. All right. Got a couple things I'm going to read to you. It's my duty to inform you that you have the right to retain and instruct counsel without delay. You have the right to telephone any lawyer you wish. You also have the right to free legal advice. Do you understand? Yes. Do you wish to call a lawyer? Yeah. You have your own yeah. lawyer you wish to contact? OK. All right. So just uh, if you can spin around for me. Sure. We're going to interview the traveler further after they talk to the lawyer. I will be contacting the uh, local police department. I will have them attend to uh, how the process will proceed from here. At the Coots Land Crossing in Alberta. I'm from Oklahoma. I'm going to Alaska. And my name is Miss Busybody. <laughs> An American preacher, his wife and their puppet didn't declare they're carrying more than 10 grand. My credit card got messed up. Yep. And so I'm going to make the money to get home. It all came to total just over 11,000. Are we going to find anything other than that? No. Oh, yeah. If we find more cash in the vehicle, then we would be looking at uh, seizing it. We just sit in the office and let them do what they got to do. Spider just ran across the seat. Where am I looking? Right here. Oh, there it is. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, so what have you done? All right. Here's the dog's clothes. Yes, yeah, she wears clothes, especially in the cold. Well, she did say she was like a puppeteer. Yeah, I've done everything on this side. We finished the examination of the vehicle and did not find any further cash. You do need to declare anything over $10,000. There are two of you, and we're taking that in into consideration, because it is $10,000 per person. But to just be aware that the requirements are there. Well, you know, we're not hiding anything, so we, we weren't worried. They didn't find anything <laughs> but puppets. <laughs> South of Vancouver, personal items belonging to a Canadian have tested positive for cocaine. So you don't have any explanation for that? I don't. And when the officer digs deeper, he finds even more indicators. So I swabbed the outside handles as well as the inside handles of the vehicle. This one is showing cocaine oh, yeah. residue. That is suspicious for sure. Our main focus here is people removing commercial narcotics, pounds of drugs. So I'm basically looking for any changes to the vehicle. If anyone's been taking off panels and putting things behind them, a lot of times we're looking for small marks inside there. I think we're done here. There was no drugs found. Having residue on your possessions is not a uh, offense in of itself. All right, ma'am. So everything checks out today. You're on your way. And that's a fair warning. I will be I'm making sure my person car is locked up from now on. We've searched the vehicle thoroughly. The traveler is a Canadian citizen. She does enter by right, so she'll be allowed forward into Canada. The yellow piece of paper there, that with the stamp on it, tells you that you're free to go. Thank you. Thank you. In southern Ontario, placing under arrest for driving while disqualified, OK? An American crossing the bridge to visit his Canadian lawyer has landed in hot water. Traveler has a criminal history, which has led to him being prohibited from driving in Canada for life. Uh, he was witnessed by officers, myself and other officers, driving a vehicle in Canada. So he has committed an offense. 
The traveler currently is in uh, a cell. The vehicle's a rental vehicle, uh, rented by the traveler's girlfriend just this morning. So it's impounded because of the offense. It's a criminal code offense, and the vehicle is part of that. So the person who's responsible for that vehicle will have to pay towing, storage, and as well the, uh, the rental for the vehicle for that entire time of the impoundment. Local police arrive and take over the investigation. You obviously understand why you're here right now. All right. You don't have any questions for me? I spoke to your lawyer. Yeah, okay. And I'm supposed to meet my, my lawyer today to figure out what's going on for next week. And I was like, ah, it's like, you know, it's like a, like you said, total brain fart. This traveler has a history of this type of offense. He was arrested here at this bridge two years ago for the same offense. Good, yeah. The traveler was uh, taken into custody by the uh, police constable that attended and be transported to their jail cells for processing. And he'll be either released on a promise to appear or attend bail court tomorrow. When you've been banned for life to drive in Canada, uh, you shouldn't drive in Canada. Next time on Border Security International. How much more are you going to lie to me? Is there anything else you may have forgotten to declare? Well, there's one here that looks unusual. Look at this, eh? He's got a girlfriend out of way. I think his girlfriend's here. Why are we lying about that?